Folks, this is David Hurley of EasyChessTips.com. I'm just going to go through a game that I played with Dr. Morgami, my regular partner here in Hiroshima, Japan. Uh, we played on Wednesday, the 14th of March, 2018. Dr. Morgami was white. And he starts with D4. And I responded with G6, following the advice of my friend and chess coach uh, Charlie Story in the sniper. So we're attacking as black with the sniper. Uh, Dr. Morgami then went C3. Let's see if there are any threats here. And I responded in true sniper fashion, like so. Bishop to f4 up here. What's being threatened here? I answered. I decided to answer. Now, this is the recommended move. This move I hesitated to do with the bishop coming up here. I'm still pretty new in this opening. So I came here thinking I would put this in in the next move to block out the bishop. Um, it seems there's no great merit in this move. But anyway. Uh, very cautious, almost playing like a black uh, semi-slav here. Dr. Morgami has his, he has his uh, bishop outside the pawn chain, but somewhat hemmed in, I think, by black's pawn structure. So e3, uh, what did I do? Knight to d7, pulling my knight across. Any threats seen? We're looking to attack the bishop, maybe, and they're recommending the the uh, cloud. <laughs> I'm quite new to this program, but the cloud here, Stockfish uh, 9 cloud, is advising to move back the bish. However, we didn't do anything like that at all. Um, it was bishop to b5. Bishop to b5, pinning the knight as it seems. However, uh, where are bishop e5? a6. What are you going to do about that? <laughs> and, uh, yes, indeed. That's exactly what Dr. Morgami did. He moved his bishop back. Now, I wonder about this move because it spent two moves going one, two to get basically to where one of the good squares for your bishop in this opening anyway. And has allowed me to um, gain some space. So I see this kind of manoeuvre as a gift to, to black. Um, my next move, bishop to d3. Uh, nope, I didn't move my king's pawn up. I moved. There we go. So we now have the c5 move. Um, what's showing here as a threat? Still thinks that the d5 move would be good to make the bishop move back. Uh, but... Anyway, what did the doctor do? Knight to e2. Knight to e2, actually. Knight to e2. Now here, I moved my knight to f6. Not that one, but this one. And I had a note. I put a note in, in, in my notes. I put a note in my notes at the time, um, thinking that perhaps I should have put this move in first, this pawn here. Um, to give this pawn some extra, co extra cover because I didn't really want to have this pawn have to take a cross here. So what I did, I moved my knight. And then I thought perhaps I should have moved this pawn here first rather than give this pawn here all the responsibility for defending this pawn over here. Um, I want to keep this pawn centralized. I want to see if I can achieve a central majority in pawns. Anyway, I moved my knight over here, and there was no need to worry about that because Dr. Morgami moved his knight across here. And you can see this recommended move here. This is a Charlie Story move um, to get the knight over here to attack the bishop. Uh, is that what I did? No, I did b6. I was worried about uh, shoring up this pawn here, perhaps unnecessarily. Uh, yes, that is what Dr. Magami did. He castled, at which point I moved my bishop 
indeed to b7 to get on this nice diagonal here i wonder if it's going to show us it's still pointing there and there looking around for all possibilities but still this is a nice diagonal i think i'm not sure if it's a charlie story move but anyway uh, that's what i did now d takes c5 i was quite happy to see that i'm not going to take with my central pawn i want a central majority that's what i get with this move b takes c5 queen to bishop three queen sorry queen to b3 queen to b3 up here attacking the pawn let attacking the bishop see there we go attacking the bishop now, the recommended move here seems to be to move the bishop, but I moved the rook across to see what happens. What does it say about that? It's still looking at... Mm, that wasn't in my mind. I was looking at perhaps whipping down here to nick this pawn, uncovering and unmasking this rook attack on the queen. Anyway, rook to b8. Queen pops up to a4 for a quick check. The king's looking a bit heated up here. What does the red target think so over here? Not a lot. It's suggesting that we put the queen in the way. No, I didn't do that. No, thank you. Uh, I'm just going to move my king across because I think that's a reasonable position for the king. It's getting a bit hemmed in over here. King to f8. Bishop to e4. Bishop to e4. Uh, where are we the bishop moves up here so do we want to exchange bishops now this ended up taking quite a bit of stuff off the board because my knight took e4 white's knight took e4 the bishop took e4 the queen took e4 but what it gives me is a nice little pawn down here so there we go that gives me a small material advantage the rook comes down here and nobbles the b pawn so note that wasn't moved queen came down here to d3 covering this knight here you see the knight um, if we pop back here you'll probably see that the rook is attacking the knight indeed so that's quite a nice move there coming across with the queen looking at this weak pawn here as well however uh, Dr. Morgami moved his queen down here, still covering the knight, protecting this pawn. Not that it's, oh yes, he's under attack, isn't it, from the bishop? Um, queen to d3. Queen to a8. I quite like this diagonal here, and also I'm protecting this pawn from the queen. If we uh, pop back, doesn't seem to it doesn't seem to be registering in the cloud as something worth attacking but still never mind i didn't put my queen there i move the queen over here to get back on this diagonal queen to a8 a4 knight yes indeed knight to f6 develop that knight rook a to b1 okay very good we're playing in agreement with the cloud here but I decided the cloud is recommending that we take, but I retreated back here because I'd be quite happy. I want to. I want uh, the knight, the rooks to be exchanged on my terms, and I think my terms are better if if I if I take back with the queen over here. It's showing this threat, even though I've retreated from it. Doctor Morgami takes, and I take with the queen. Then rook comes straight in to attack the queen, indeed, as is suggested. And this is suggesting queen to uh, c8, but I went queen to a8, keeping on this diagonal. And yeah, so we do have this. The reason for that is that you have this very nasty double attack on this pawn. The bishop is going to sacrifice if i take with that pawn and then the queen comes in here with check this pawn was a very weak pawn um, a bit of a problem because i hadn't made that move here so perhaps that's a weak move on my part to move back there however this is how things played out for us rook the rook comes in rook 
so almost strengthening there we go strengthening that attack on that pawn on that this weak pawn structure here um i didn't move my queen i just moved him out of the way and so the bishop comes in yeah that's uh, very nasty there supporting that rook with the queen building up quite a nasty attack however this is what we had we had a sacrifice of the bish or an apparent sacrifice of the bish um except i didn't want to get into this position of being um nastily checked by the queen on this diagonal and the queen supported by the rook over here that looks like a possible winning end game for dr morgami so I thought what I'd do instead is simply attack the queen and to see if I could knock the queen off off there and nobble the bishop on my own terms. However, he wasn't having any of that. I did move the queen up one to d4, maintaining this, uh, this threat here. Now, this did give me an option which, after I played it, I thought I may have blundered which would not, not be anything unusual. Um, I, I wanted to block off this, this access to the, the, this square from the queen by offering my knight. Clearly here, my knight is attacking. So that's, that's the thing. My bishop is attacking the queen while my knight attacks the rook. Um, and the knight itself is protected by the queen. So the knight's blocking blocking the queen's access to this um to the uh d d6 square um supporting the bishop while the queen comes under attack by a bishop defended by the king and the knight's attacking the rook and the queen in turn is defending the knight however i was a bit worried by this option here at the time i thought i blundered by um effectively allowing the rook to check the king and uh i have to give up the queen but what i what i forgot in the because time was running down and we're, we're playing 30 minute games here is that this is powerful here so i'll play through what i thought was my blunder and how i think it plays out i thought that i had kind of blundered here and maybe lost the game if Dr. Mogami did this. In fact, Dr. Mogami didn't do this. But what happens if he comes down here and says, check, I have to take with the queen. There's no other option here. I have to take with the queen. Now, it's recommending, it seems to be recommending that the bishop takes because this threat comes in later, this backline threat. So we're both vulnerable. But if you take with the, then as you see i i get back and he takes there and we're left with an end game with a bishop and a knight against a, a rather stuck rook but nevertheless a rook and a bishop and a, and a knight so it wasn't such a bad move at all this knight here i think it's a game saver now looking at it um in the heat of the moment i wasn't sure if i'd done some ghastly blunder However, um, what happened next after I did this move was that Dr. Morgami made a mistake. Queen to c5. Looks like he's building up an attack on that pawn there, but it's an attack which I can roll with. So I'll take the rook. And then the bishop comes in to take the king. And exactly as is said here, the king does not retreat into the corner. The king stays here to attack the bishop because uh, we've got a nice exchange here. And don't forget, I am material up. I've got a rook and a bishop and a knight. And so if the queen takes the knight and I take the bishop with my king, um, the material advantage continues to tip in my direction. So as the as the um, cloud is advising, is that's exactly what Dr. Morgami did. He retreated there. Um, bishop to bishop to h4. Uh, and that's exactly what I did. Queen to b7. Queen to b7. Now 
the cloud is thinking time to start moving these pawns. In fact, not moving these pawns was the undoing of Dr. Morgami in the end game, not to give away the ending just yet, though it looks as if I have. Um, queen to a5. Where are we? Queen, bishop to h4, queen to b7. Wait a minute, what's going on here? Queen to a5, knight to d7. So, oh, wait a minute, whose turn is it? Queen to a5. What on earth is going on here? Uh, bishop to a4, queen to b7. I've got here queen, queen takes a5. Duh, queen takes a5. Now, this was... Um, this is what led up to the downfall of Dr. Morgami because I bring my knight over here. Now, look at that. Is that not a winning? Did I blunder badly there? That's it, isn't it? Checkmate. That is checkmate. Look at that. Massive blunder. I survived a blunder. I was living. I was living on the edge and that just opened up the gate to checkmate the king the king cannot move wow there we go dr morgami you missed a checkmate that is a terrible move a terrible move so look at that <laughs> the 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 board that's good. It's recommending. That is a much better move. It's recommending that we exchange queens, offering this, apparently offering the knight with checkmate coming in here. So there we go. Two late blunders. I massively blundered by putting that there. My eyes had moved off that, that bishop. And there it is. Game over. But that's not what Dr. Morgami did. Um luckily for me he went knight this is a, a massive counter blunder so i said at the end of the game though we didn't have time to analyze it last wednesday i said at the end of the game that we had made a blunder and a counter blunder but i was looking earlier at my knight my actually much better knight move um i totally missed this blunder counter. i mean i knew this was a blunder because i was waiting to strike down here and there we go that's the end of the game so that's how things transpired um, there are chances on either side. We both blundered right near the end. Um, time was running down on the clocks, but still, that's no real excuse. This bishop move here was an unforgivable blunder, but I survived to win the game. Um, again, it's the psychological thing, the tension towards the end of the game. Um, that is massive. Just look at that. You've got, your, you've got your bishop here aiming for this square and the queen aiming for this square. And I was looking at this square. So I moved my knight. But that is a much, much better move. Look how much better that is. Still threatening down here, offering a knight in exchange. But in fact, the queen will have to take. Then we come down here and now... We have a, a rook advantage, so we should still win this game. Um, wow. Well, there we go. Massive blunders. It's not, not seen by either side at the end. Pam. Pam. Massive blunder. That's what you missed, Dr. Morgami. Checkmate. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'll probably make a shorter one when I'm a bit more lucid uh, to show the opening. Uh, but anyway, uh, talk to you on Wednesday.